All right, guys, I'm going to have to talk quick while this bird is still in the frame. There are a lot of wading birds, or what we call shore birds, that are working the shallow vegetation around these ponds in the deep south, like I fish here. Now, every time, oh, there's a great blue heron right over there. Anyway, these birds attack small fish, like the bluegill that live here, and they hit them in the head or hit them in the side, uh, in the gill plate or something like that, and they get frightened and they swim off. And a lot of times they're already right at, they're in such shallow water that they're right at the surface of the water and they skitter across, disturbance across the surface of the water and you can hear it, they're splashing and everything else. The big bass that are sitting out deeper water are kind of waiting for that to happen. It's a chain reaction of events. And they jump out and grab that bluegill that's been injured and is frantically skittering across the top of the water. That's what brings us to today's lure segment. This is another antique lure, antique topwater called the jitterbug. One of the cool things about the jitterbug is it's one of the oldest bass lures going. To explain the whole ecosystem behind why the jitterbug works and it still works today. So to speed things up, I've brought you two of my jitterbugs. The smallest size you should get is that size right there. Don't get the little bitty ones, they're pointless. These topwaters can be pretty big, particularly jitterbugs, because we're gonna use jitterbugs in the summertime and way into the fall. I'm gonna be using jitterbugs till probably November. Bass themselves are getting larger, the forage fish that they're eating are getting larger, and they're trying to store up for winter, so they're looking for larger, higher calorie prey. Now, on this jitterbug, I've changed things up, which you may see. Remember, I'm targeting big bass here. So the tiny little treble hooks that it comes with, I've removed those completely. I've put on much, much larger hooks and I have cut the lead hook off the treble hooks. So when this bait is in the water, both hooks are laying flat like that. Both hooks are pointed straight up. There's a bunch of reasons I do this. First of all, safety. When I've got a bass in hand, particularly a pretty good sized bass and it's flopping around, I only have four hooks, hooks to worry about, not six. These are wider gap hooks. And so they hook up a lot better, particularly with big bass. You're gonna get a lot of strikes on these that don't get hookups if you don't change the hooks. The other thing is there's no way to put a trailer hook on these. So the only way to achieve that is to have a longer shank from a bigger hook. So you, in effect, get hooks back here so it's like having a trailer hook. I get a better action out of this bait than I do my other jitterbugs, and I get better hookups on it. Just need to make sure that you're using sharp hooks. I need to sharpen these, in fact. Here's how you work this size jitterbug with the hooks cut like this. There's no way to tell how fast the bite's gonna be. So you have to vary your retrieve at first to figure out if they want it real fast and constantly moving or in short stops like this. So what I do is a five count, a four count, three count, two, one, back to five, like that, okay? If they're hitting around five or a six count, something like that, four, five, six count, then I can, they're really active and I can go ahead and just bring the bait in and they'll hit it. If they're hitting around the ones, twos, and threes, that means that they want it slower and I need to stop it more often. What I'm looking for is this sort of gurgling, uh, bubbling sound that this bait's gonna make. And if you're not hearing it and seeing it, then the bait's not doing right. You want to reel it, reel it just fast enough to get that gurgling, plopping, uh, bubbling sort of sound. Don't go any faster than that. If you fish off the bank like I do, you're going to have to get this bait back over some vegetation like this. That bait came right through that vegetation right there. You saw it on camera. And one of the reasons is because I've got the hooks cut like this. This particular lure is much more weedless than the other jitterbug I have tied on, the big jointed model. I've picked up the large jointed model here to explain a few more things. It was before chatter baits, it was before buzz baits, it was before the soft plastic frogs that go across the top of the water. This bait was pretty much all of those baits back in the 30s. As it goes across the top of the water, and it walks like this, back and forth, on a gurgling, bubbling sound. Now, it, a chatterbait does the exact same thing, just a little bit under the water and a couple of feet deep. This is essentially a topwater chatterbait. One of the neat things that you can do with this bait that you can't do with chatterbait or buzzbait or a zoom horny toad is you can stop it. That's what I do with the huge jointed model here. 
I have to reel this one a little faster to get a, a good gurgle out of it, but it is very loud once it gets going. So I try to, you know, reel it faster, get a nice loud action, and then stop it. Nice loud action and stop it. It's gonna stay in the strike zone a little bit longer. Let me show you how this one works. So when do you use one of these and what colors do you use? I typically go with the larger size and I don't start using them until about midway through the summer. This is July 1st uh, right now. I use them as soon as the initial growth of weeds and moss backs out about the middle of summer. So there's that May and June where, you know, I'll probably using something like a ribbit frog or something like that, or zoom trick worm, something that's very, very weedless. As soon as those weeds start to reduce in the summer, headed toward the fall, that's when I'll start using these. What time of day you use them? I use the coach dog orange. The yellow is probably one of the best colors. The red and white, also one of the best colors. The bullfrog with a yellow belly is a very good color. I use all of those in the morning. First thing in the morning. Evening, I switch to black, wounded black, which is probably the best one they make of the dark colors, which is a black with red eyes and a red gill. Perch, and they make one called wounded perch. Those are also very good evening colors. Way back in the black and white fishing magazines, these were billed as nighttime lures. That's where a lot of people catch most of the bass on these is during the nighttime. This time of year, pretty much all across the south, there's a lot of weeds in fairly deep water. There's always gonna be grass all the way down 10, 15 foot sometimes. It's gonna make a huge amount of noise, huge amount of action. It's gonna disturb the light on the surface. Fish will come up to get this bait from a lot deeper water than you might think. Just like the Zara Spook, which is an even bigger bait than this one. You can fish these around deep trees, uh, creek channels, things like that. A lot of times those fish are suspended in the water column and they can hear this thing a long way. So don't be afraid to throw this thing right out in the middle of the pond. Next upgrade to this one is going to be bigger treble hooks. Hopefully I'm gonna get the, the, uh, the red bleeding bait hooks and I'm gonna trim that hook off. This one is significantly less weedless in just these basic weeds here at the bank than the one with cut hooks is. I hope you guys get to using these really cool old lures and catch some huge bass.